Hi guys, welcome back to Infinite Possibilities, the podcast where we explore the lives of amazing people, their choices, challenges and opportunities. <laughs> and today I have a very special guest, Chris Rush. Hello, welcome hey, to the podcast. Hey Karen, how are you going? No, good to be here, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for agreeing to this. It's my pleasure. <laughs> it, took me, it took me a while to, to warm up to the idea, to warm up to the idea <laughs> but here I am, so there. <laughs> Sounds good, got Chris into the flesh. Absolutely. So, um, Chris, what's your sort of one minute introduction about what you do? Right, uh, Chris Rush, yeah, I um, partner at KPMG, I've been at KPMG for 22 years now. Wow. And um, responsible for the Queensland technology risk and cyber business here, as well as uh, leading the work we do around uh, a lot of implementation of solutions in Queensland. Yeah, that's amazing. A lot yeah. of responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think it's, uh, it's a manageable amount. I think it's, it's an excitable balance. I, I like the balance that I get from it. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So we really want to start right at the beginning. So we really okay. want to know, Chris, what kind of child were you like growing up? Yeah, I guess I grew up pretty, I'd say normal. I grew up in a regional <laughs> regional city in, in North Queensland. And um, I was probably, I wouldn't say I was an academic child. Oh. I, I would say that I was... I was okay, you know. Yeah. I was, I was oh, sporty. <laughs> I was pretty, I was pretty sporty, but never, never great at sport. Yeah. But I, a lot, a lot of my B A student kind of thing. Yeah, B B A. Yeah, yeah um, probably n- never consistently A, but yeah. but B B to A, and you know, I think just enjoyed a, an outdoor lifestyle and played a lot of sport, and yeah, yeah just awesome. uh, you know, fairly, fairly easy going. I think simple life growing up in a regional city, I think, so, yeah. yeah. And what were your favourite sports? I played, uh, I played tennis a lot. So yeah. I started tennis as a, as a, a young, young fella, um, probably when I was eight, I think. And I played, oh, wow. I played soccer and then touch football and various things. My parents wouldn't let me play rugby league, which is, <laughs> you know, coming from Townsville, that was a big, a big challenge because everyone was playing rugby league. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't play much rugby league. I did play a little bit at school. But yeah, mostly, mostly, mostly tennis and touch football, and, and I also did a bit of athletics as well. So. Oh, not bad. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. why were why were your parents not keen for you to play rugby league? Just because it's th- dangerous. Well, yeah, I think I think my mother had a cousin who was injured, oh, and nice. so I think that was always a a reason to not to, to not play it. So uh, so I just had to put up with that, to be honest, because I wasn't allowed by my, yeah. my parents, which was which meant I kind of snuck it in at school and various yeah. other places, and. and I, but yeah, never never played at a club level yeah. or any competition other than where I could sneak it at school. So yeah, that's yeah. cool. Were mm. your parents overall quite strict? They were reasonably strict. Um, I was I had two older sisters, and Ooh, so you're the young one. I I'm I have a younger brother as oh, well. You do? So okay. I got, yeah, so I got sisters who are seven and six years older than me, and then I've got a, a brother who's five years younger than me. Oh, so there's a quite quite a big spread yeah. of the of the kids. So. Um, so I guess I had those two as a as a role model growing up. They they probably provided a a fair bit of parenting to me as well. My parents had a small business, and so they were always busy, oh, and we spent a lot of time in the shop. Yeah. And um, so older sisters kind of looked after us quite a lot as well. Yeah. And so I, I I think that was probably good. Probably shaped me quite a lot having yeah. a couple of older sisters. So. That's awesome. Yeah. So if your parents had a small shop, that means you probably started working quite early on? Helping very out. early. Yeah, very early. So yeah, evenings and weekends would be spent yeah. sort of at the shop and they would be just moving stock around and doing various yeah. things like that. And so I, I kind of helped them do that, you know, move boxes and, yeah. and, um, and on uh, school holidays and things, I've worked at the shop. I actually got paid to, Ooh, to work at the nice, shop from a... Nice. From quite a young teenager, um, which is probably not technically legal, but I, I got yeah. paid by them. Um, in, in the in the in the storeroom, I think is where yeah. I probably mostly worked, unpacking boxes and yeah. moving stuff around and doing deliveries and things like that. And then graduated from there into uh, working in the shop, so I was interacting with customers. Oh, congratulations! At a, at a, at a pretty yeah, a pretty early age, wow, that, that wow, happens. How old so, were you? Like, I, I imagine was, you're at the cashier, and then I'm like, yeah, oh, where's, where's no, the guys? Well, I was probably I was probably in my late teens when I was you know working in the shop and serving uh, serving customers. So, um, probably 17, 18. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty solid. Yeah, it may have even started before that. 
yeah. to think of it. But yeah, I think that was good though. I think that it kind of taught me uh, quite a lot about the you know, cus side. customer interactions as well and, yeah. and, and that you know, customers can be challenging sometimes and being able to work through that <laughs> sure. I think was good, a good skill. So, so I started, started yeah, very much in my parents' shop and then had a range of other jobs after that as well. So. Yeah. Cool. And what kind of business was it? And did that sort of spark your interest in that sort of industry? Um, no, it was <laughs> a, not interested in that industry. Look, it was a, it was a, it was a, a, a regional department store. So it, it sold a bit of everything, right? Oh, they okay. did a lot of um, uh, things that are probably quite old fashioned now. So they sold clothes and materials to make you know, that people would use to, you know, sew their own clothes. Oh, and, yeah, and so that's cool. it sort of operated in an era which which is kind of past us now, I think. Yeah. That's not not so much uh, people you know, buying material and sewing their own clothes. And, yeah. and we used to sell sewing machines and all kinds oh, of things nice. like that as well. So So you had the best outfits, am I correct? Well <laughs> there was yeah, there was most of them were okay, but sometimes my mother would make me wear something strange, which which uh, <laughs> I just put up with. But I think it's uh, yeah, it was interesting. Interesting to sort of see how that how that industry was disrupted by yeah. you know, large department stores and you know large sad. chains. Yeah, it, it really, it really, it sort of meant their business sort of declined, and and it was really hard for them to evolve to to still make it viable, right? I yeah, think that's that was that's the reality cool. of it. So because um, that's all they knew, yeah. and so. Uh, so it was yeah. So they ended up uh, ended up you know, winding up the shop and and uh, and that was it. We we went uh, got jobs elsewhere as yeah. as kids. And so uh, I delivered pizza. Wow, and, and was I, that your very first job outside? Um, was it my first job? I, yeah, I, I delivered pizza for Eagle Boys nice. back in those days. Yeah, Eagle so that Boys was great. Boy. And um, and and then also worked at the Cowboys. I, oh, I used to nice. work or manage one of the bars at the Cowboys, yeah. which. Uh, which was a, a learning experience as well. <laughs> so, any fun story to share? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, yeah, there's a lot of memories burnt in there. But um, yeah, I probably can't go into too many. But it, look, it was it was a uh, it was a hard job. You know, it yeah. was uh, it was a long day because the day would sort of start in the you know, lunchtime and go through to like ten o'clock. Oh. So it was a, it was a long day. You know, in the North Queensland heat, and so. Uh, so you definitely got your money's worth. They paid very well. Oh, I, I remember, that's nice, I remember that's the, nice. the Cowboys paid very well. So, um, but yeah, learned a lot. I had to sort of manage the finances of the bar as well. So that oh, kind of gave me a little good. bit of a, an insight on financial management at a small yeah. scale, <laughs> but uh, stock management, Chris all those kind of things. Early. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think some of those things probably shaped me again. You know, a lot, a lot of customer interaction as part yeah. of that. So, which is your core strength as well. Well, yeah. I think it's I think it helps in terms of what we do. You know, yeah, I think it's uh, you kind of get used to that from a very early age, and so um, I think it helps me as a consultant now. Yeah, maybe awesome. a bit. Yeah. Oh, it definitely does, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. And then back to school. So, wondering, yeah. how did you sort of fit in the school environment? Were you a popular kid? You know, were you very introvert? Were you teacher's pet, class clown? I yeah, I wouldn't say I was. Any of those things, really. I I just kind of I, I, look. I was reasonably studious. I wasn't a great student. Yeah. I was pretty sporty, so that gave me a certain level of yeah, awareness see. amongst the the, the team, uh, the, the the classes. <laughs> and, and I look in high school. Yeah, I was um, I, I was school captain in grade wow, twelve. That's, that's pretty and good. but that was kind of surprising for me because I wasn't I wasn't sort of the the most, most academic popular, or yeah. the most sporty necessarily. I was probably a blend of, of things. And and I also probably drifted between different groups of people. I, I didn't yeah. necessarily stick with one one group, whether it was the sort of super smart kids or yeah. the super sporty kids. I kind of drifted between groups. And I think, I don't know, that made me, um, I guess, flexible. Yeah. Probably that was part of it. Yeah, and good at interacting with like all kinds different, of people, right? Different interactions, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and I did, never was very conscious of that. I just was just seemed quite natural. So I think, um, yeah, it was probably surprising to be to be <laughs> voted as school captain. But I didn't yeah. I didn't think I was probably that material. But um, yeah, I think it was uh, it was good fun. School was pretty good fun. Yeah, and good leadership skills. Uh, yeah, but I probably wasn't very conscious of that. Probably wasn't yeah. very conscious that I was I needed to lead. 
Yeah. Or, or, or what leading really meant. So that was that was that felt a little bit uh, made me feel a little uneasy. But yeah. um, don't think I was too bad at it. Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. it should have been fine. Yeah. Cool. And so at this point in high school, when you're thinking about careers, what mm. was sort of floating through your mind? Well, I I was pretty confused to be honest. I I wanted to I. I I did art. I painted wow. and drew. Wow. I, I was always, yeah, I was always kind of a, a bit arty and always. Yeah, so creative. I did art classes outside of school and various things. So I, I thought I was going to be like a. Architect. Well, no, I like a study fine arts. That's what yeah. I wanted to do. And so, um, and, I, and I, I don't know what sort of stopped me from doing that, but then I, I also had a kind of mechanical brain. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll be an engineer. So mm. I started. I went to university um, at James Cook Uni and um, started doing engineering, which I was terrible at. Oh, really? But you I have that logical at, brain. Well, to, to a point, but I didn't. I don't think I had the mathematics or the physics yeah. to be able to kind of get through, you know, the, the sort of technical side of, yeah. of that engineering course. So after sort of struggling for a year and a half, I decided that you know, that's not for me, and so. Um, decided to do. I, I like technology, and so I, I decided to do. A commerce with a, a technology major and um, yeah and then I was better suited to that I think so yeah. I don't think I did amazing in terms of my grades I kind yeah. of got through yeah and um, but I did like what what I think that gave me in terms of a balance of both understanding technology but then I saw how it fits into business so I think that was probably a good sweet spot for me so yeah that's pretty awesome yeah and did your parents have any sort of expectation of what they wanted you to be no I don't I don't recall ever being driven or directed too much yeah. by my parents oh, to that's be honest pretty good. yeah I had so I had two older sisters and they they were they were they were a lot smarter than I was <laughs> and 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 they made really good decisions and went on their own path and oh. so so I guess I I don't know I just tried to not be the black sheep compared to yeah. them so to speak but they yeah. maybe that's why you didn't do fine arts right may, what did they may, study well yeah they studied law oh, and then that's a lot and of then pressure. science they, the, one of them's a scientist the other one's a lawyer oh my gosh, so, so cool. they're quite different they're quite different people different yeah. interests but both you know really really sharp um, and so yeah, I, I I I don't I didn't get too much pressure to from my parents to be honest. They just let me do what I thought I wanted to do, and it took me a while to work it out. But I think I kind of got there in the end. With yeah, the, that's awesome. Yeah, with the, the the commerce with the technology. So yeah, yeah, cool. And then so when you graduated from uni, and then you're looking for jobs, what was sort of like floating through your mind? Yeah, it was it was interesting. I I. Um, it was a bit of a confusing time, to be honest, because I, I was in North Queensland, so in Townsville, and um, the opportunities there are narrower, clearly. Um, yeah, for sure. And I was looking at jobs in finance, finance companies, and and then I was looking at also some public service jobs. Mm. And I did um, I did take uh, uh, I did take a job at. Um, the local port up there, so Townsville Port, was where I spent the first five years of my career. Yeah, so, wow. So out of university, into there, and um, you know, learned a huge amount during that time. So that was quite formative for me, I think, in terms of a professional career. Yeah. Kind of gave me a sense of what, um, how technology does support businesses, and and I did uh, quite a lot of system implementation work as part Ooh, of that time. You're very so. like technical, right? Reasonably technical, not very technical. Yeah. I probably had a data background rather yeah. than a programming background, yeah. and so um, so that time was good. We, we we implemented some some systems, some quite large systems, and I learned a lot as part of that process over that sort of five year stretch. And um, I think that gave me the the taste for actually wanting to go into that kind of career where I was consulting around technology. Yeah. That felt like a good a good place to move. So yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And then your next job was to KPMG. It was, yeah, but it, that sort of happened a little bit by accident because oh, I um, um, my girlfriend, now now wife, she was she was finishing university and she was coming down to Brisbane to study at QT, and so she she was moving down, and I thought, well, it's an opportunity to move, right? And, yeah. and it's a it's a good catalyst, and so I. Um, uh, Without without her knowing, she'd already gone, and I I was applying for 
for jobs and I responded to a job I think in the Australian paper, newspaper <laughs> as it was back then, yeah. for a job as a, what was called a senior accountant, which was a very strange name for me because I wasn't an accountant. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, and then managed to get that job and started as a senior accountant at KPMG. Oh, wow. In 2000, I yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's so cool. And at that point in time, were you sort of like itching to get out of Townsville? Like, was it like, you know? It, it was, it? yeah, look, I think, I think it felt like it probably, yeah, we needed to see the world a little bit and, yeah. and try something different. And um, yeah, so that, it, it, it is sort of, out, I wouldn't say outgrown it, but it, yeah. we just wanted, Wanted to know, you know, know more of what's out there, and also to 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 do things professionally that I probably would be a little bit stuck doing yeah. in Townsville. So, but you know, absolutely loved my time at the port, learned a huge amount, but yeah. just kind of needed to to try something different. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. And was it almost hard to leave the job at the port because you built like up a certain you know reputation, like network, and yeah. you have to start again from scratch? It was yeah. Look, it was a a little a little bit of a challenge. I wouldn't yeah. say too hard. I think. Um, I probably communicated that reasonably well to the people I worked with and for that I was yeah. looking at different options and and I think they, they were reasonably supportive of me oh, doing lovely. that. So I think it was okay in terms of separating. Um, and um, yeah, look, the apl applying for the job at KPMG was very strange. It was, yeah. a, it, was, it was a very unusual environment for what I was used to. Yeah. And so, yeah, starting the job was quite a challenging period of my life, yeah. Yeah, and was there like a really high learning curve going from? It was, yeah. It was very, yeah, there was a whole bunch of concepts that I just didn't get, right? Yeah. And, and um, you know, working through those and, and, and feeling pretty inadequate for a while. Yeah. Um, I remember those those first, it was probably the first 12 months where I felt pretty pretty inadequate, a bit of an yeah. imposter. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, seemed to, it seemed to start to click into place and I could sort of see how I, you know, was both, you know, finding things that were interesting to me and, um, and also things that I was reasonably good at. And so um, I think it started to build from that. But it was pretty hard the first, the first period of time. Yeah. Um, particularly I wasn't starting it as a graduate, so it wasn't yeah. like I was a, you know, a... a, a piece of clay ready to yeah. be sculpted. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd sort of come with a, you know, five years of experience and so I'd, uh, there was a little bit more expectation. Yeah. Probably a little bit uh, more expectation upon myself to, to, um, to be able to do things that were meaningful. But um, yeah, eventually I started, it started to fall into place. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, because yeah, you joined as like senior accounts manager. So when you came in, like, you didn't know too much about the like industry and stuff, but then you started managing people like straight away. Yeah, the, uh, well, I'd always ma I'd managed stuff. people in my prior job, yeah. so the managing of people side of it was okay. I think I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel too bad about that. Albeit, I, it took me a while to not, or to really understand the subject matter and therefore know that I was managing them the right way. Yeah. And so, that that was a bit of a challenge that you know not knowing the subject but then also trying to manage people to get to an outcome that felt a little challenging but um after, after you know, 12 18 months I, I think it you know became more natural i understood the subject matter i knew what I, I kind of was doing so the people side of it i think was always okay yeah oh that's pretty good cool. um but it, I, I wouldn't I, I probably felt okay doing it i don't th think i was necessarily great at it right yeah. and so there's a difference <laughs> there but i think um yeah, was was more than happy to, you know, to be um, managing people. Yeah, that's cool. And what yeah. were your sort of, um, I guess, study tips for you know being able to like pick it up kind of reasonably quickly? You know? Yeah, look, I, I don't, I, I was never a great studier, and so <laughs> um, my approach was probably just to to work hard to make to try and understand it. When things started to, you know, fall into place, you know, I needed to understand something mm. in order to. To, to really make it stick and remember it. And, and so I'm not a very good rote learner. It's more about the kind of understanding. So, um, so if, in, a, in a work context, that just meant just trying to Be work. Hands on. Yeah, hands on and, and just work until I got it right. And I say, so I think you're working pretty hard early on in particular. And, yeah, and how probably, hard was it? Oh, you know, I don't. Yeah, Long hours, weekends. Yeah, but it, it didn't, it just seemed like that was what was needed, right? And I don't think anyone was saying you need to work long yeah. hours on the weekend. It just seemed like 
know, that was needed in order to be able to get the, the understanding I needed mm -hmm. and then also get to the outcome that was needed. So um, didn't feel like it was the, well, it felt like the right thing to do. Yeah, that's so cool. But it's awesome that like, you, you're just like pretty self-motivated. There's not really sort of these external influences that are pushing you, not even from no. an early age. So No, no, yeah. I didn't. No, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't think there's there's been too much external. Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely I definitely sort of look around me and, and pick up on things, but I wouldn't say there's any particular one thing. It's just yeah. sort of a collection of bits that come together maybe and I'm and not very consciously to be honest. It's it's yeah. all <laughs> just, just I just there's influences I guess that that you know shape how I do things and what I think, but I wouldn't say that there's you know certain people I look at as strong strong role models. That's not oh, okay. I I see yeah, I don't I think I've ever been that kind of person. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And then tell me more about like how you sort of got into the, you know, tech risk side. So from accounting to the more technology. Yeah, the tech risk side of it was <clears throat> it was kind of strange for me because I'd done tech implementation, mm. and so I'd you know done implementation of systems, but the concept of risk and controls were like yeah they were weird um, to me. They were so I, so it took me a while to realise that when I spoke about this bit of functionality that was either that was a control to a certain business risk so that that yeah. took a little while so during that first 12 18 months that was the stuff that took a, fell into place for me so because yeah. i knew a, a bit about you know the the systems and how processes worked and how functionality worked and so making the transition was just that learning curve yeah so yeah another learning curve one learning curve to another <laughs> yeah it, it's but that that was the thing that took a little bit to, to understand and to think about differently, so, yeah. yeah. And how did you sort of like, were you like pretty happy in that accounting role initially? And then you were like, oh, but I miss technology, and then it, you found your well, way there? It really, it really wasn't, and it was called a senior accountant, but it really was an accountant. It was about, it was about systems, and it was about... Oh, that's um, funny. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, the work we do in support of So uh, it's pretty much order. tech work. Yeah, but we probably probably did a range of other advisory oh, okay. things then as well. And so the the technology business in the firm back then was sort of one team. Mm. And you know, now now it's a lot bigger and more complicated, split out in a lot of different teams. But yeah. back then it was all kind of one team that did everything. Yeah. So it was a bit of you know, a bit of audit work, it was a bit of advisory work, it was a bit of implementation work, it's all things bundled together in one group who did that. So there's a bit of variety there, which I think is a key thing for me. It's always been about variety. Yeah, keep you on your toes. Enjoy the variety. Yeah, I think that's the that's the the thing about the firm that's been good for me um, is that it's never kind of felt like one job for twenty two years. Yeah, a career within a career, no. Yeah, there's lots of different you know phases of the career and lots of focusing on different things and in different geographies and um, so it felt like I was kind of changing and needing to evolve the whole time, which yeah. I think kind of kept it fresh. And the, the firm was doing different things. Um, we didn't sort of just stuck doing the same thing over and over again. So it never really felt like Groundhog Day. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so yeah, cool. it's, uh, I've, I've always managed to find over the last 22 years things that you know, I'm interested in within the firm. And yeah. that's worked out pretty well so far. And do you know why they sort of had like one big technology division and then split into different, was it just because all the areas are sort of booming? I think it just, it, it was, it was, it just matured, right? I think I think the everyone was still, you know, we're talking about back in the two thousand, so yeah. <laughs> the technology was a lot simpler back then, and and um, you know the offerings that we were provided as as an, we were you know, very much an accounting firm back then were simpler. Yeah. And I think over the last twenty some years, things have become a lot more nuanced. You know, the yeah. technology spaces, are, you know, technologies evolved so, so much. So many different divisions. For like so, so much now. Yeah. And, and and so it's just become maturity. And as, as things have matured, different teams have, have sort of split out. And so um, and just the diversification of the service offerings just become so much greater um, yeah. in response to what I think the market's demanded. So. Yeah. Was yeah. it hard to specifically choose tech risk? Because I bet no, you're I, good people. No, I didn't choose tech advice. risk. I didn't. No, I didn't choose oh, tech okay. risk. I was. I was. Um, assigned it. I was assigned tech risk. Yeah, yeah. And, and that bec that became you know as a as a function of well, where as as a team in Queensland. Yeah. Where were the groups of people and the tech risk and cyber business had a reasonable percentage, and then the tech advisory business had another, and so you know. Tony, the other partner, he, he kind of went with the tech advisory, but we, we very much have shared 
the work um, yeah, there's a lot of over that time. A absolutely. And a lot of, I still do a lot of work that's tech advisory mm -hmm. and he does work that's tech risk. So we've, we've worked that between us. Um, but you know, being responsible for the team and helping drive it, we needed to have some segregation there in order to you know, make sure we're giving the right attention to the team. So that's how it evolved. Um, so yeah, not, not necessarily uh, a, a choice thing, but I was doing enough you know, in terms of the variety of work that I was doing that I, was, I didn't feel constrained by that, yeah. so, which I think was you know, part of the reason I'm still here, right? It's you know, not, not feeling constrained, so. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. And then tell me more about the promotion to manager and then moving to London. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah man, the, the promotion to manager, that happened just um, yeah, in the early 2000s. And, yeah. and I think it, it felt like once I kind of got my act together and understood yeah. what I was doing, going from you know, senior accountant to manager was, um, yeah, felt fairly... Uh, it's pretty smooth, right? It's fairly smooth, the beginning fairly smooth transition. I, I, again, managers sort of meant having a different kind of relationship with customers, which I, I, I thought I was You're good at that. not so bad with that bit. So, um, so yeah, the, the, um, the, the transition to manager wasn't, wasn't such a big deal. Um, but as part, part way through that, I think the, my, my then, my partner and I, we traveled on a holiday to, mm. to Europe. Um, and at the back of that, uh, she decided that she wanted to stay in London and, and, yeah. and start a, you know, a, a career. That's uh, awesome. She's a lawyer and, and, and she wanted to try that out for a period of time. And I, that seemed like a really good idea for me as well. And so um, I came back to Australia and then I organized the Secondment. I met up with some people while we were over there on holiday. and. Yeah. And then we'd worked out this common arrangement and I went back a few months later and worked for the firm in, in the UK. So, so that, was, that was good, yeah? Yeah. And how was the move from, so you went from Townsville to Brisbane into like a big city, so. Yeah, it, look, I think it was, it was fine. I didn't, don't think it was too overwhelming in any way. Yeah. I, I think it, it was all, you know, it was exciting. It was yeah. you know, experiencing different things. Um, and I, I think we're always, always open to, you know, to doing that, to experience different challenges. Um, so it never felt overwhelming, I don't think. It was more, it was exciting. Yeah. And you know, I think we, yeah, we, embraced, we embraced different things, you know, in terms of the work. It, the work for the firm over there is familiar. So it didn't feel like I was starting something that was completely yeah, that would have been hard. unnatural for me. It sort of felt like the same work, just in different, different geography with different clients. And so, so that was, that was good, I think. Um, yeah, and, and then just we, you know, we enjoyed that time living there. Not, a, not all of it's easy. It's not always easy yeah. living in a big city. Yeah. Commutes and various things are a bit tricky yeah, sometimes. Yeah, Wear you down. But, um, you know, really enjoyed that time and used it to travel a, a, in a huge amount. Wow. And see different parts of Europe in particular. And, and um, yeah, I think, you know, really fond memories of that time. The, the work the work side of it was 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 good but it probably wasn't necessarily the, the highlight of it yeah. I, I did get to work for some really interesting clients amazing clients but um, the opportunity to travel and just experience the world I think yeah. was really the focus during that time so yeah yeah that's pretty good work-life balance kind of. yeah it was it was working pretty hard and and um, and then you know every weekend we'd do something so yeah. it was busy right it was yeah. really go 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 um, I can't imagine doing that now. I wouldn't have the, the, energy, <laughs> the energy to do that. But uh, it seemed to be okay back then. So um, Yeah, that's cool. And yeah. I also saw that on LinkedIn you worked in Hong Kong. We'd spent some time in Hong Kong. Um, not, 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 a, a lot. A, not a lot. No, no, yeah. no. I think there was some, spent some time in Dubai and different places. So. Yeah, and the US. But, and well, I worked with US clients. Okay, and, so, and same with uh, Hong Kong clients, but not necessarily in Hong Kong. But... But yeah, the opportunity to go to the US was there at the back end of my UK time, and I, I did, I did decline that because uh, the US firm just seemed crazy in terms yeah. of what they, how they went about their workday. Right, they, was, they seemed to work for twenty hours a day, oh, spread across. Great. Yeah. And I, I, I just wanted to get the work done and be able to then have a little bit of life, right? So yeah. I think it, I, I chose not to do the US thing after that, um, yeah. and come back, yeah, come back to Brisbane, and yeah. Yeah, and then tell me about the promotion to partner. Um, yeah, it wasn't. Well, it's uh, it was a bit of a journey, and I, and I uh, for a while there, I'm not sure I, I wanted it to be oh, honest, and okay. so that was a little bit controversial. Yeah, you know, a lot of questions asked as to why why don't you want to be a partner? Of course, 
yeah. it's a great thing, right? I said, well, you know, is it a, like big is responsibility? It, you're sort of carrying the weight. Yeah, the I just division. wasn't sure. Well, what did? Well, I, I wasn't sure what it meant, and is it something that I really aspired to? And yeah. and um, and so for uh, for a little while, I sort of ummed and ahed about it, right? Yeah. And I wasn't quite sure whether you really wanted to go for it. And then I and then I decided, well, I think I'm. I think I'm probably able to, I'm, I'm capable of doing it. Yeah. Um, I think there's some reasonable benefits of doing it. And so why wouldn't I? And so, mm. so I, did, I did push hard to, to get there and you kind of go through the process and yeah, managed to, manage to get there. But I yeah. um, was probably a little reluctant about it initially. So Yeah, that's surprising. Yeah. Because you work really hard, but you don't, you're not necessarily like, oh, what's the next step? What's the next step? Yeah, I don't, I probably never was that kind of, I never set the, the career goal around, yeah. you know, I want to get to here yeah. by, by that time. I was never one of those, you know, really goals oriented person or had a plan, career yeah. mapped out or anything. It never was that kind of thing. And I, and I, and I think that was perhaps because I um, enjoyed the, the things that presented themselves on the journey as yeah. opposed to really committed to a task and, yeah. and, you know, ignored other things. So I was, you know, open to other other things that came up, I guess, so. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And so what is the day in the life of being a partner? You know, what time do you wake up? What time do you clock off? What kind of tasks do you put in between? Yeah, it's, it's well, it's a bit variable, right? I think nowadays yeah. it's, it's got, you know, variable locations in which I do that. And then yeah. probably at the moment, so three days a, a week in the office. But yeah. um, so it, it does change day to day. Like I usually get up. 6, 6.30 oh, and, and nice. the first the first part of the day is always about getting the kids out the door, yeah, right? So there's yeah. a, so I think that, that doesn't change for many for many parents for many years. So there's a lot of fights and arguments that happen getting the yeah. kids out the door. And Wake up, you're gonna be late. <laughs> that's it, and so, and so only after that you, you kind of think, okay, well, I've got to get myself yeah. going now. And, and, and you know, I, I don't typically start particularly early. I might, maybe I'd start at eight, but, yeah. but Mostly start eight thirty, to be honest, yeah. and um, I've probably never been a really morning person. Um, <laughs> I know some people are very good at that, but I'm not one of those people. But I do probably, you know, happy to spend some time at night getting stuff done. It's probably more of an evening person. Yeah. Do you sleep late? Um, I don't. I'm not much of a sleeper. Oh, okay. No, Just I don't. Need five hours. Five three or six hours. hours. Yeah, that's oh, all. Well, yeah, that's I don't. Good. Three hours is not enough for me, but yeah, I, I need around like nine eight. So I, can't I know relate. my no my, my 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 wife's very much like that too. Yeah. So, but I probably only have five or six hours person, and that's yeah, enough. That's um, good. But um, yeah, look, the days you know the days are variable. I, I like I do like variety. I, I don't like sort of sitting down and yeah. reviewing documents yeah. and reports and things or writing reports all all day. It's usually broken up by. You know, lots of meetings, meetings with staff, meetings yeah. with clients, <laughs> and I do like that that kind of variety. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Most of your day is meetings, is that correct? <laughs> a lot of meetings, yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of meetings, and you know, I think that's part of the kind of thing that I try to consciously manage. It's because yeah. you do, you can have days that are full of meetings, and you just don't have time to either think, yeah, or um, um, or to get other tasks done you know there's you, you need you need to have some space to do yeah, actual work, work sometime but you know the the meetings are work the client meetings are definitely you know part of what you regard as work for sure and and so i think the variety is needed there and and getting the right balance is hard it's hard to yeah. get it right yeah lots of co things competing for you know time a lot of you know a lot more internal meetings now than there ever used to be yeah you know, the firm's pretty complex and so you know, lots of things that we're trying to do around investments and, and other yeah. things which are, are really important, but they're not, you know, they're sometimes at odds with the, the priorities you have in terms of servicing clients. So yeah. it's hard to get the balance from. Yeah. And would you consider yourself a big extrovert? No, not at all. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I think, um, I think I'm a probably a well-practiced introvert, to oh, be honest. And so nice. I don't, yeah, I, I, I've, I've done some of those personality tests yes. and, I, and I kind of sit on the in the on the on, on the, the brink in, on the brink right yeah. and and you know I don't I don't feel uncomfortable meeting people for the first time I guess I've yeah. been used Sounds to like that. Sounds like you're kind of like the best of both worlds throughout most of your life. Yeah. Right? Like I, sporty like academic but neither too inclined. But not, the yeah team. it's just kind yeah. of in the middle. Yeah. Right? I think it's <laughs> sort of yeah mediocrity maybe that's it. It's, <laughs> no, no, it's, no, 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 it's no. um 
so yeah, don't yeah, not definitely not on the extremes of anything. Yeah. I think just comfortable. You know, actually quite like you know thing, things that uh, where I've just got you know I'm al I'm alone doing something right, and and I, I use gardening as a way to do that. Yeah. Right, gardening is yeah. a big thing for me, just so a bit of alone time. It is good therapy, right? And um, but then other times I like you know spending time with the family and like spending time with priority with, but, but with you know with the the team as well you know i think we, we went bowling last night yeah, that was pretty so cool yeah. that's pretty cool right Did so come last and got you know, the last prize <laughs> but but you know i kind of yeah just i, I like to you know to change it up right i think that's yeah. what i enjoy that you know that variety yeah it's yeah. cool nice and also what about what are your sort of tips for leadership slash how would you sort of describe your own leadership style um, look at, yeah, this is, it's one, it's, it's a tricky one for me. I don't, um, no, I don't pretend to be, you know, that the strong boisterous leader yeah. uh, and I don't think that's necessarily valid always. Some yeah. people definitely have that style, but I, um, I think it's about, there's a sort of example and an authenticity, I think probably are more important to me. Yeah. Um, I think now leaders it's, it's you know often quite a lot to you know complicated things to work through and I, I don't I think part of being a good leader nowadays in particular is sort of recognizing that we don't have all the answers and that the teams kind of work through yeah uh, to come up with the answers so I think yeah it's, uh, is that a style I'm not sure but it's I think recognizing it's like a, that kind of down to earth kind yeah of I think recognizing yeah. that you know it's the team is what matters it's not <laughs> It's not the leaders that make the difference, it's the team that kind of achieves an outcome. So um, I think that's, that's important to me. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, but definitely demonstrating what I think the right things to do are and people seeing that, I'm very conscious that you know, the team are influenced by what I do. Yeah. And so I'm conscious of you know, trying to do the right thing, whether that's you know, work in relation to specific jobs, but also in the way you know, we kind of balance the work and home life stuff and all yeah. those, you know, setting the right priorities. I think that's, that's important. So, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, nice. We're nearly at the end of the podcast. Just a few more quick questions. Sure. So what is some advice you'd give your younger self? Um, look, I think it's okay to not have the plan. Uh, that, that's the thing for me. Uh, I used to be stressed about, you got to have yeah. a plan. What's your career? Figure it out. What's your career plan? What are your goals? And so... I remember being really stressed about, geez, why don't, why don't I feel like I need to have a plan? Yeah. And I think, you know, reflecting now, it's, it's kind of okay to have some loose goals and then just enjoy what the opportunities are that present themselves. So I think I'd reassure myself that that's okay. Um, because, you, you know, you do hear that. You've got to be kind of really goal-oriented to, to achieve success. But I think sometimes you just got to be open to ideas, open to different things. Mm -hmm. I think if you're too focused on a goal and you kind of up things that things that present themselves, you might reject. Yeah. So I, I, it's it's hard to get that right. But yeah, I think I'd advise myself that. Yeah, that's pretty good advice. Yeah. Yeah, and Chris Rush, what do you think the meaning of life is in your opinion? <sighs> it's a tough, it, look, it's a tough one. I think. Um, well, f you know, for me, I think it's about you know, the, the the balance of of um, you know, work, work achievement, personal satisfaction, yeah. um, family, uh, you know, be, being around family and being able to kind of uh, nurture each other. And, and I, I, think, I think more and more as I kind of got, um, got older is also recognising that, I've, you know, how do I give back to others as well? I think that's something that I'm still trying to work through. What's the best way that I can contribute? You know, yeah. pretty, pretty fortunate in terms of what I've, um, you know, my, my life and so yeah. how, can I, how can I help people more? And I think, so feeling like you're, you, and, and actually doing good, I think is, is, yeah. is a big part of the meaning of life, you know, helping and living things better than you found them sometimes, I think is a yeah. good thing. So, but it's, yeah, I, I haven't really thought about it, to be honest, but it feels <laughs> like a combination of all of those things is a, would add meaning to your life. Yeah. If you could achieve a range of different things that achieve a sense of satisfaction around it and feel like you've done some good, yeah, that makes good. life meaningful, I think. 
Yeah. Yeah. So there are multiple meanings to life. Oh, I think so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think this, the search for one meaning is, yeah. you know, idealistic, <laughs> but I think it's real. So I think you, yeah, you, everyone interprets what that means for them. Yeah. Yeah. Disclaimer. This is just Chris Rush's. That's it. It's my view. Yeah. There, there may be a meaning out there. And I'm, yeah. <laughs> if someone can find it out and tell me by all means, but uh, yeah, that's, that's my meaning, I think. So. Yeah. And the next question is, if you won the lottery tomorrow, what would you do differently about your life? Look, I still I do like working, but I would like less. Yeah. And and I do I do love uh, the, the automatic lights. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and look, I do love travelling, right? And I think I think we've felt really constrained by during COVID, COVID right? Yeah. So I think getting out and seeing more of the world. And I think now with with kids, my kids are of the age where they travel really well as, mm. as well. And oh, that's awesome. And they you know really quite open to travel. So I think you know travelling with them would feel like a a key part of it. Um, I don't know how you do that with also letting them finish school and do all those <laughs> things, which are very necessary given how young they are. But um, yeah, that feels like something I would do. And and again, just thinking about well, what you know, the world's got a range of challenges at the moment. Is there something you know I could I could do more to you know, work through one or more of those challenges? I think I think now you know now I think we're a much more conscious world about yeah, you know, what we've been doing and yeah and all of those things are you know I found myself kind of evolving my views around that stuff reasonably quickly over the last you know five years in particular but even probably the last ten years and yeah. so um, you know I've got different views on things that I had probably back you know when I was in my twenties so um, yeah what you know what what's what's meaningful change and how can I contribute to it I think would be a question I'd stare into a bit more yeah. closely yeah don't know what the answer would be but yeah. there's a need to want to do more so that's that's probably it yeah that's cool and the final question is what is an ideal day in the life for you it can be anything it can be work related it can be personal oh yeah it's good and it's you're good. like a beach person no not a beach person <laughs> no never never been I, like I do lo I do love the ocean right so yeah. I, do, I do love going to the beach I don't really have a good beach skin. That's yeah. a problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, the beach is good. Um, definitely an, an element of nature in yeah. it. And I think um, do, doing something that that I'm experiencing for the first time. Something new. Something new and, and observing. You know, uh, uh, that's that's why I like travelling, right? You kind of go to somewhere new and experiencing something new. I love that. Um, so it's something that includes that. You know, yeah. This is an impossible day to achieve, right? Yeah. But but I think you know having being surrounded by family as part of that, I think would feel really important as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think the perfect the perfect day with everything would be impossible. But I, I think there's lots of different perfect days. You, yeah. you can you can have really great days by. Um, you know, with from a family perspective or a travel perspective, even yeah. a work perspective, right? That's yeah, great. That's great days of work, right? So, um, bringing all this all together in one day would be weird, but uh, yeah. you could, yeah, definitely a range of different things like that would be great days, right? Yeah, yeah. that's cool. I do, and it's you know, the balance for me, it's not about. You know, I'm not a kind of um, you know live to work kind of person. I'm a, I'm a you know balance and a work to live. Um, kind of person, so um, yeah, definitely enjoying family time, living, enjoying life. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So we're at the end of the podcast. Want to say bye? Thanks, Karen. Appreciate it. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye.